I can feel the heat coming right off those flames. Uh, wow. It's May 13th, an almost too perfect day as I head up Canada's iconic Icefields Parkway. Skies are clear and temperatures are unusually hot. Numerous wildfires are ongoing across northern Alberta's boreal forest, and I'm going in to take a closer look. I arrive in lush forests south of Grand Prairie where a local wildfire is already picking up in intensity. A northeasterly wind is fanning the flames toward the southwest, and for the first time I encounter the unmistakable smell of wildfire smoke at close range, immediately taking me back to my wildland firefighting days. It's different from the dirtier smell of older smoke that spreads hundreds or thousands of kilometers away, plaguing the general population with poor air quality and hazy skies. Using a combination of paper maps and Google for backcountry navigation, I locate a lease site that doubles as a vantage point and a safety zone. A few hundred meters away, the flame front encounters a stand of spruce trees which go up in seconds with a frightening audible roar. It's the so-called spring dip, a period of time during spring when tree foliage has low moisture content, making it extra flammable. Until the spring rains come and the sap gets flowing in the trees once more, it's wildfire season in Alberta. The next day I move to a more remote wildfire further east. Once again I locate a suitable vantage point and set up my cameras. Here I watch the spectacle unfold as the fire slowly creeps toward me from the east. When flames get into the upper canopy of a forest, it's called a crown fire, the most intense kind of wildfire. Because there's no wind noise to wash out the sound, I can hear the roar of the distant fire, which sounds like a massive waterfall as heard from a couple kilometers away. Suddenly, the fire increases in intensity, drawing air into itself and clearing out all the low-level smoke, including the smell of it that had earlier been present. The lack of wind also causes the multicolored smoke to rise into an imposing vertical wall, becoming an otherworldly scene. Okay, things are getting pretty intense out here. I wanted to share what this is like in real time. You can see that very ominous black smoke, that column of smoke just rising very quickly. Then the wall of flame begins to crest the hill just south of the lease site. I decide to get back into my vehicle and drive toward the fire's edge. Even though I've been close to numerous wildfires, I still get that sense of nervous anticipation in the pit of my stomach. Despite being mid-afternoon, the sky begins to become ominously dark. You can tell whenever there's about to be a big burst of flames when the light builds behind the trees and the roar suddenly intensifies. Burning embers sparkle above the trees in the black billows of smoke. The song of a seemingly oblivious white-throated sparrow ahead of the roaring flame front reminds me that wildfire is a natural process that has been on the landscape for millions of years and is critical to the health of the boreal forest. Still, it pains the human heart to see animals fleeing from fire. I noticed a moose, owl, squirrels, and this little bunny all attempting to make their escape. Go. But once inside the fire, it's like hell on earth. You can see here little spot fires starting out ahead of the main fire. You can feel the radiant heat off those flames and uh, you can just hear the roar of this fire here. Back in the vehicle, my mind goes into laser-like focus, engaging situational awareness. Look left, look right, head on a swivel. Is the wind still light southeasterly? What kind of fuel is beside me? Could my escape route become blocked? Near a safety zone is that lease site off nine o'clock. Know where the fire is at all times. Did an ember just start a new spot fire ahead of me? Keep moving, don't turn off the car. Watch for blinding smoke. Trees sizzle and pop as they're engulfed by flames. Lower down, it's like peering into the fiery furnaces of hell. Air shimmers and radiant heat is felt off big bursts of flame. Wind becomes gusty and erratic as the fire inhales air into itself from all around and vortices swirl up. No living thing belongs in here. After only a short while, I retreat. I move back to a new lookout several kilometers away. Here, all is calm again, but the ever-intensifying fire causes the underside of its smoke plume to boil with Mamatis as it spreads out, and the sky darkens to an ugly brownish-orange. A gloomy feeling settles in as nearby towns are evacuated ahead of a looming wind shift that could blow ongoing wildfires toward them. The season is off to a horrible start. This could be a long summer. <laughs> 